This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. Mark Hartsman, the curator of WeirdHistorian.com, is back with a story for the month of November. It's not unusual when you see a news story that says somebody has attempted to steal a Lincoln, but it's very unusual when that Lincoln is the body of America's 16th president. Mark joins us via Skype from New York. Hi, Mark. Hi, Peter. How are you? Jess tickety-boo. So someone actually tried to steal Lincoln's body? Yeah. Yeah, it was a gang of counterfeiters in Chicago. So this happened 147 years ago, uh, November 7th, 1876. And this happened to be election night. So at this on this day, this evening, um, Americans were casting their votes between Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel Tilden for the, at that point, the 19th president of the United States. So officials basically were pretty focused on the election count. Everyone's busy counting up the votes. People are awaiting the results. So this gang of counterfeiters I mentioned in Chicago thought this was a great time to go kidnap the body of Abraham Lincoln. And the reason for doing this, you might be wondering, well, you know, why kidnap Lincoln? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they had, <laughs> they had their boss, was a guy named Ben Boyd. And he had just been caught and sentenced to 10 years in prison. So their idea was to kidnap Lincoln as a way to get Boyd out of jail as kind of a ransom. So what they figured was, it's basically a, a simple plot. Uh, this was in Chicago, so it's in Illinois, and Lincoln was buried in his tomb in Springfield, Illinois. So, you know, convenient. And they thought they would snatch the body from the tomb, and then they would go drive off to, to northern Indiana, and they were going to bury it in, in sand dunes there. And they would tell Boyd the body's location. They'd get that message to him. And then, basically, uh, Boyd would then exchange the whereabouts of the president's body um, with the governor in exchange for a pardon, plus $200,000 in cash, which by today's, um, uh, you know, with inflation, that would be about $6 million today. So yeah, it's I was pretty about good to money. Say, I was about to say that was a lot of money back then. I mean, heck, it's a lot of money yeah. now, but it was a lot of money back then. Yeah, and I figured, you know, they, they probably wanted money that wasn't counterfeit if they're going to kind of start fresh after getting out of prison. Um, so do it right, get two hundred grand to start. So, and then they figured, okay, so if they have the body and Boyd is supposed to convince the governor he knows, they'll have to have some way for that to really be believable, right? Like that the governor would accept that this guy in prison actually knew where this stolen body was hidden. So their plan was to get a foreign newspaper, something that couldn't have just been gathered easily, right? And they would tear it into like different kinds of unusual shapes and they would leave a piece of that newspaper in the empty tomb. Um, and then the rest would get sent to Boyd. So it's like puzzle pieces. So like, look, I have this piece. And if you go to the tomb, you'll see it matches this piece. And that's the proof that the information I'm giving you is legitimate. So it seemed like, you know, 1876 seems like a pretty decent plan. Uh, but of course, it didn't work, <laughs> unfortunately for Boyd. And, and, and why didn't it work? Well, um, I guess you could say drinking and women. <laughs> so one of, the, one of the counterfeiters was at a bar. And he was trying to impress a woman. This was like one of the local saloons. And he was talking about how he was going to be getting a piece of this $200,000 ransom. And he kept drinking and he kept talking and sharing way too much information about the plan. And the woman reported this to the local police chief. And that, that uh, news escalated up to the Secret Service, who were already kind of looking into this. So they had people you know, listening in. Um, and so they, they basically found out what the plan was. And then they actually they consulted with Lincoln's oldest son, Robert, to let him know of this plot. And the question, I think, was like, do we want to just go stop this now? Do we want to kind of let it proceed a little bit? Maybe we can catch him. And Robert Lincoln said, yeah, let them do the job and then just catch him just before they would actually, you know, pull, pull my father out of his tomb. Uh, so basically catch him red-handed. And wow. so they went ahead and let this... this uh, this theft proceed. And at the tomb, they had a bunch of secret service agents basically waiting there. They knew when this was supposed to happen. So they were waiting quietly for hours for this thing to happen on the seventh. And finally they hear the bodies coming in and, you know, moving around and everything. But before they could go jump into action, one of the secret service men had his gun just accidentally go off. And, uh, and that created confusion amongst the Secret Service men. And, of course, the, these grave robbers heard the noise, the, the gang. So they 
they fled. You know, they they got spooked, and one of the the Secret Service men, of course, he's called out to surrender, and these guys are just they're taken off. They're not going to stop. Hmm. And uh, and of course, they found that in fact they had lifted the lid of the sarcophagus. Um, you could see, you know, that that they had gotten pretty far actually with the plan before they got scared away and ran off. So they got away, although um, uh, about 10 days later, two of them actually were caught and sentenced to a year in prison for grave robbing. Just a year? Well, they didn't actually pull off the entire job, I suppose, but yeah. Yeah, but... It, a year for uh, for the attempt. The, the attempt, attempted grave robbing. Uh, yeah, but the attempted grave robbing of a president of the United States should have a, a higher penalty. Yeah. Yeah, well, they didn't, they didn't get the $200,000, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and then after that, so the, this whole tomb that Lincoln was in, they basically kind of moved it. They didn't want this to happen again, so they moved the body. And then by 1901, uh, there was a new tomb constructed for Lincoln at Oak Ridge Cemetery in Springfield. And so Roberts uh, requested that his father's remains at this point be placed in a steel and concrete vault. 10 feet beneath the floor of the burial chamber. So he made sure that this time, if anyone has another crazy idea to go steal his dad's body, they'd have a lot more trouble. So this, mm. this time, you know, he made sure no more grave robbing could possibly happen. Now, I want to go back to the alleged snitch, and that is the woman who went to the, not just the, just the cops, to the police chief, as you said? Yeah. D- did the guys who, who did this, and certainly the ones who ended up going to jail for only a year, and I still find that ridiculous. But um, did they know that that they were the ones, or she was the one that turned them in? Or conversely, does any of the three know that one of them was just a blabbermouth in the first place, and that's how they got caught? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I don't think so. I don't think that uh, that the guy actually knew that she had done that. I'm sure they didn't realize how the Secret Service showed up there, um, but they, you know, they were onto him. But you know, it's one of those things you always hear about people drinking too much and blabbing all their plans <laughs> and then, you know, spoils spoils the plot. Well, what's the term? Uh, loose so, lips sink ships. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So a good example of that happening. And you know, uh, but it, for the good of the nation. If if Abraham Lincoln didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. I mean, when you think about it. Very yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, the the, the play that he went to. Um, our American cousin. Do you know he had been to that place several times? No, I didn't know that. And could actually mouth the words along with the actors because it was one of his favorite plays? Wow, so he really didn't need to go see it again. No, he didn't. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> he did, that's, that's the point that a lot of people, you know, people were saying, oh, gee, he didn't get a, a chance to see the play. He did several times. <laughs> Wow! Now I didn't know that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's Lincoln. What can I say? Yeah. So um, these guys ended up in jail for only a year. Do we find? Do we? Do we know what happened to them after, or did they live upstanding lives, or did they continue in a life of crime? I'm guessing they probably continued a life of crime. They seem like those kind of guys. Maybe still trying to get Boyd out of prison. He still had about nine years to go. Oh, that's right. That guy was still in prison. Did they yeah, add, the big boss. Did did they add any time to him? Did he at least get another year? Or, uh, you know, it doesn't. It didn't say the in the articles. I went through articles from 1905, and then later on in the the 30s and and 40s, some some other articles about. It, it didn't actually get into what happened to Boyd after that. Um, so I'm not sure if he got his sentence extended, or if it was just the two guys that actually got caught in the action. Well, considering the they guy- might not have ratted out his boss at that time. Yeah. That may have come out later. You know, the, the, considering the fact that um, those two guys, those two clowns only got a year, uh, I, I can't imagine Boyd getting much more anyway, if, even if they were aware of the fact that he was involved. But yeah, there you yeah, go. I, I would agree. Anyway, it's, it's a, a fascinating story for the month of November. And, you know, not only is it the month of November, as you say, it's it's your traditional election uh, month so uh double bonus i guess yeah yeah good weird news uh election story for sure yeah. always a pleasure having you on sir um by the way how is your new book doing we are not alone 
the extraordinary history of UFOs and aliens invading our hopes, fears, and fantasies. Oh, it's doing well. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's been fun chatting about all the different UFO stories through history and, and how we got to where we are today and what's going on and constantly new stories coming out in the news as well. So it's it's been um, such an amazing topic to be discussing and sharing with people. So I hope people get the book. It's full of truly incredible stories, uh, lots of images, tons of interviews, all kinds of good fascinating things. Well, congratulations on the book, and thank you once again for uh, this story for the month of November. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, thanks for having me, Peter. Mark Hartsman, the curator of WeirdHistorian.com. He's the author of several books, his most recent one being We Are Not Alone, The Extraordinary History of UFOs and Aliens Invading Our Hopes, Fears, and Fantasies. You can go to my website at thestuffwild.com, check out the show number for this program, which is show number 0744... And you'll find the link to Mark's site, plus links to either Amazon.com or Amazon.ca, where you can order his books directly. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.